Hello there, everyone. Welcome to another live stream. Tonight, it's a little bit different because I had someone contact me today and they wanted to know if 3D printing could help them out, if they could make, if I could make a replacement door handle pull for their sliding screen door. And uh, so I talked to them for a couple minutes and, and, uh, said, can you send me a picture with something in it for a scale, like a quarter or something? So they did. And I turned it to grayscale to make my life easier. But here's the basic shape, and it's basically a rec looks like a racetrack. Looks like Martinsville, but anyways. Good evening, Ryan. How are you tonight? Thanks for stopping in. And uh, looks like he taped the quarter to the door above it, so that I could get use it for scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in as a background in Rhino 3D, my weapon of choice for this kind of thing. And I'm just gonna rough it in and see if I can make something that looks like it might fit the fit the bill. And then I'm gonna do a test print and give it to him so he can try and see if it fits and we'll work on it. I can't stop what it looks like, sir. I know. <laughs> All right, so. I'll move that out of the way. And the way we do that is we just go down here and we can place a background bitmap. And you plop it in like that. And you can still see it in the background. That's why I made it black and white because I could have spent time and made, if it was a more complicated shape, I could have drawn it somewhere else and just brought in the shapes, but I thought I'd try it here. Make it quick. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a layer and I'm gonna call it quarter. Quarter for scale. There you go, we'll do that. There you go, quarter for scale. And We'll draw, no, I have to place that first. Done, I'll move it in a minute, we'll scale it and everything. For now, I'm just gonna drop in a quarter and then we'll drag the shape around to fit the quarter. Okay, so let's just simply draw ourselves a circle and the center will be a grid snap on. And the diameter is going to be, it's coming to me, 23.87s, oh, sure, four millimeters. Oh, let's be brave, even though the photo isn't that accurate, we'll use 23.87. Hi there, Craft Shack. How are you tonight? I know it's practical. Practical printing. Not infringing on a friend's copyright on their YouTube channel name. Well, I don't know who I don't know this guy at all. He reached out to me from the from the web and uh, found me and said, Hey, can you can 3D printing do this? And of course, I said, sure. And uh, with COVID rules here, we're all on lockdown. So pretty sure that going to somebody's house to measure their door handle, A, is against my personal safety boundaries these days. And B, it's frowned upon legally here right now, potentially. It'd be a stretch, but, you know. So yeah, I just said, can you send me a picture? And he said, okay. So 
and he measured how deep the hole is. So I'm going to work to that and I'm going to make one up and then he can take it, see it, how it fits and where I have to change it. And then we'll iterate remotely. So it should be an interesting exercise at least. Yeah, I'll probably print pet G just to be safe, even though it's an inside handle. So, all right, so that's the size of a quarter in the real world. I'm sure that's logical. Yep. So, what I usually do next is I think we're almost in the right ballpark, actually, which is kind of shocking, actually. Um, the picture isn't quite square on, so we might be off a bit, but we'll use the height to set it rather than the width because it may skew a bit. So now what I do is I zoom in on that spot a bit, and we're pretty close in the error factor. And we go back down here a bitmap and we can move it. And in this case, we're going to move it, turn off grid snap for a minute. And I'm just gonna grab an edge here, slide it over. I might shrink the photo just a little bit to get this area it looks like we're a little bit the picture is a little bit too big right now a little bit it's a technical term so and then we can scale it so I'm gonna work from the middle because it looks like we're almost the same both ways vertically One more. I'm not expecting perfection on this. It's just the way to do things. I go there. Height wise, that looks fairly okay. Good evening to Fancy, how are you? What have you been working on? <laughs> Doing video stuff, that's good. Video's good, me too. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that looks pretty good. So far it's going all right, I haven't messed anything up. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can. I'm going to turn the grid snap on for this part and hope that things work out. So, okay, now that we've got it scaled right, I'm going to move that over. Let's just take a, let's change the plan a little bit. Let's just do a quick rectangle for rough width. And then I'm just gonna center that because I can move the picture behind it now. I don't care where the quarter is, I only need it for scale. How I do it, wow, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. How's things, how's things down south? <laughs> sort of, kind of south of me, just a bit. And SB, how are you this evening? Thanks for stopping in. Busy's good, sir. Busy's good. 
That's what they tell us anyways. I understand busy. Up north, farther than me up north. of me. I'm pretty far south there for Canada. Yes, Ryan, you are correct. Is like an old silver dollar or something for the coin because I can't tell from this picture what it is. Aren't there parts of, well, I guess, yeah, I guess Pence, PA is below New York all the way across, right? Okay, I suck at geography a little bit. You got too many states and stuff to keep track of, but I've driven through yours in the dark <laughs> through mountainous roads. Moonshiners everywhere. Oh, sorry. It's too far north. I'm about 50 or 60 years out. Okay, we can lose that now. so great at centering that, did I? Say this is just rough. It looks like it's the wrong size right now. We'll have to work on it. <laughs> I know. It's still gonna give a hard time. Did I ever ask you about the the bears on the side of the road during that one of those trips? Actually I think that was a later trip. That was when I drove to Earth that year. Kill bears. Uh, I gotta remember, I gotta make this smaller, if anything. Now, taking in into consideration the parallax view. The angle of projection where he took the photo. I'm just spitballing it. I'm gonna try it and see how it works out. All right, I'll just come back and remake it. A little bit of two dimensional scaling here. We'll just make it a little bit smaller. It's going to go in the hole. Let's do it. One more. <laughs> yeah. I just remember seeing the this big black blob. I thought it was a garbage bag first, and then I was afraid it wasn't, and I didn't make the connection to it being a bear, because we don't have a lot of those on the side of the road up here in Canada, you know. I 
really messed that up. It was a hard color to see here. Seems I'm still working on the quarter scale. Let's get up to something brighter. Looking at what shows up best over there. Oh, it's a hard one to use because everything turns that color. Around there. Well, that's too bad. I think they would have fixed the highways by now. It's not like they've had as many people in the way this last year. We've spent some pretty quiet traffic days here and there. Hey there, Bio Nick. How are you tonight? Thanks for stopping again. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been streaming every day. They had a video every day in April. That's the it's a challenge thing that StreamYard's doing. So I decided that it was about time that I did some more of this. And so I thought that was a good opportunity to give it a shot and do something in front of a camera every day. You can upload pre-recorded stuff too. It doesn't have to be live, but life's easier enough to edit anything. Basically lazy. <laughs> so... Two years over their com completion date on the highway already. Wow. Well, thanks, Craft Shack. That's that's nice of you to say. <laughs> it certainly has refreshed my um opinions of things that I'd like to see changed in StreamYard. <laughs> Fortunately, one of the downsides for them is that my my um feature request and could you do this different so it works better list is going to be longer i'm sure they aren't going to like that but they used to ignore me it's fine but uh, well i'll try it i tried to do the a similar one last year with um live streaming pros they did one sarah's lita live every day in August, I think it was. It was an A month. And uh, I got the first weekend. But theirs is a, a challenge. Like, they give you, like, an assignment, like, in school. They're like, think about something that affected you in your life and blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately, that, that week, my dog passed away. So, you know, that was kind of an easy one and a hard one to talk about at the same time. But I was spending three or four hours a day. One day I timed it. I spent three hours planning my stuff, doing it. And then you were supposed to go and, you know, help encourage other people, give them feedback and stuff. And I wasn't getting any feedback really, except from people I knew. And I was like, I'm spending three or four hours a day on this stuff. I got better stuff to do. <laughs> and I didn't really care about most of their assignments. Like, you know, it was all kind of designed for people that were didn't know what to talk about. It's like, well, I got a whole list. I don't have that problem. So. Oh, I just realized I just made it. No, it should have worked. So, yeah, I dropped out of that one like a rock. And I only felt bad for a little bit. <laughs> And I realized that all that time back. I mean, you know, last year it was just as easy to spend time on things because I wasn't going anywhere. Same as now. So. Today they announced that, like, our kids are on elementary school's not on spring break right now, which has been delayed. And they just announced this morning that schools aren't going back at the end of the week, like, for next week. They're going to be all virtual again, so. I just thought it was silly. They were open anyways. Seeing as teachers weren't allowed to, well, teachers weren't on the list to get shots yet. So, at all. 
So, so now they've added all of them to the list teachers, all support staff at the schools and everything. So it's amazing. Just bought the new Creality. Well, I went ahead and had a $20 coupon. Cool. Well, that's all right. I'm not familiar with that one. So have you got it yet? Got it set up and working? It says me, the guy that's got two or three machines in boxes still. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. We'll get to them. Over this next month, we'll get them all built. <laughs> I hear you. That's why I had that King Rune that I showed the other night. It was almost like an impulse buy at the checkout at the grocery store. It's like, all right. It was under 200 bucks. I said, okay. Canadian 200 bucks. And, uh, and it seems to work fine. I haven't done anything else with it since that, the next night. And actually the next day I did another print and then that was it. But it's unplugged and moved to another room now. So I could use the table for other stuff. I'll get back on it. All right, so that's kind of the shape of the hole, I guess. Find out. Oh, it doesn't ship till May. Oh man, you're in that waiting zone. I'm familiar with that. I've waited. When's Black Friday? November. So till. Yeah, three months is pretty common for for Bruce's stuff, so. Okay, have a good night, sir. Be safe and enjoy your travels. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking buying something before it's released. But, but it's Gives you something to look forward to. You can watch the mailbox every day. Harass your, your postal carrier. <laughs> Probably not wise. <laughs> All right, now up here, there's a, a hole for a screw, which I have no idea what size it is. So we're just going to throw something in there. Of course, it's not going to fall on a center spot. All right. Well, let's just say that we're going to put it there because I'm definitely going to be coming back to do these again. I get a four millimeter hole. So I think there's something not quite right here, but with his scaling, but we didn't use a dime and just didn't tell me suggested a quarter and he didn't say no so I'm just in one view I'll just do that and then to put one on the other end let's mirror it to the other end so over here grab the mirror command turn on midpoint snap to the middle of this long line and reflect it Let's see how close it came to being on the hole. Yeah, not quite right. So now we have to make a call. If we take everything and shift it up one millimeter, we get closer to that hole. And we're not too far. Let's leave it there. And they say this is a one shot deal. This is just the first round. I'm just going to rough it in, make him something that's kind of the right shape, see if he likes the kind of the shape of it, and then he'll tell me where it's wrong. Red light, how are you? Good to see you back again. Nah, no airbrushing tonight. I had this, a guy contact me today that needs a, a little project done, so I thought I would, going to do it tonight anyway, might as well do it in front of a camera. Currently, the both the airbrushes are dismantled from cleaning, last night and I didn't even go down and put them back together yet so so 
I had to I had an interruption and a change in, in my schedule. And so I figured I'll just do this while well, I got to do it anyway. Let's do it in front of everybody. Have people hang out with me while I do it. <laughs> All right. So now we got to do, uh, I'm going to take these, highlight them all. And I'm going to join them together into one shape. And now they're just one, one Martinsville shape. Object. And now there's got to be a flange around it that's up the sides and around enough to make a place for these, the screws to, pardon me, to mount to. I wanted an airbrush for years. And now I've got everything. If I was to do it again today, I would buy one of the kits where you get everything bundled together. I collected stuff over time. I already had a big compressor, so I didn't want another. And I've got a small compressor as well for tires and that, that I use. It's lighter than the thing I was using. But it, I would probably go with one of those smaller, loud kit compressors in the kits and try it that way. If you already got a compressor, just make sure you got a regulator that goes down to 10 to 20, 30 PSI and try that. Oh, and do not disassemble the airbrush before you ever use it like I did. Because when I went to use it, I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be working or not because I'd, I'd already taken them apart. And I did remember I did take the needle out of the second one because I couldn't get the needle out of the red one. Originally, it was kind of stuck in there. A good sign. So if you can, like, it's fun. Like I like painting with it. It's fantastic. It's, and it's way easier than a rattle can because you can control where it goes and how big, you know, how much spray is coming out, how wide the spray is just by how close you are to things. It's, it's kind of fun, but we'll see how much fun it is next time. <laughs> when I try again, but, and I had my finger on the buy another airbrush, like a, $140 one today or last night and I talked myself out of it. I thought I should use them a little bit more before I go and buy another bigger one, like a better one, better. So I did some more research, did a proper cleaning, I think, and I am going to try and smooth the, the needle on them to see if that helps too. It helps with flow. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> If anybody was watching the stream last night when it was done, I did the end screen and muted myself and everything and forgot to tell it to stop recording to YouTube and everywhere. I'm surprised nobody noticed went, um, hey. <laughs> so it was like an hour and a half later or something and I kind of looked up. I was like, well, first thought was, have I said too many bad words while I've been cleaning this thing down here? <laughs> Might get a strike for bad language, but but no, it, it looks like I'd, I put the mute on when it was done. So it was fun. All right. So I'm just going to try this out. And it looks like the door frame. Let me see if I can bring up the actual one of his actual photos. Yeah, it's just aluminum channel. You can see the outline of the old one a little bit. Welcome to apartment living. Somebody before him must have, because I asked him if he broke it, if he was in trouble. I thought he was talking about a, like a, you know, a handle that sticks out of the door. I thought his wife was bugging him, but he says, no, no, no. He goes, it's, it's never been there. Right. So... Looks like they got a nice setup on their porch, at least. But yeah, all right. So it's gonna have to be non. All right. So let's take this and Mr. Chris Riley, CEO, is in the house. 
How you doing, sir? Thanks for stopping. Never tried what? What have you never tried? So I'm going to go with, try and bring it out to, I think that's actually the edge of the frame. So I'm going to give it just a, oh man, I'm going to pull that. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to bring it out just be three millimeters so it comes to about there because there's the edge of the door itself you took it on a bit of an angle so all of this is the this end of the door uh, modeling from a picture yeah if it was for me I would have just you know I usually use I do use pictures for this when I'm doing stuff for me I just take a square on picture and then take a couple of measurements and do this saves a lot of time but in this case I don't know this guy and I'm not going to his house under the COVID rules. So this was the, the easiest way to do it. I said, send me a picture and I'll do a test print and then you can test fit it and tell me what has to change. And he lives nearby, so. It's actually a pretty good way of doing things for me anyway. I've had good luck with it. And it saves a lot of time measuring and test fitting and back and forth. You can cut it a lot. Okay, so we're just going to go to the here and just do a offset. And we're going to do, I say three millimeters. I'm going to try. And you can pick inside or outside, depending on what you want. I want it on the outside, and I think that'll do pretty well. My only concern is that he's got a, like, when the door opens, it goes into a, a channel. Or when it closes, it goes into a channel, and it'll hit the door frame. But we'll find out. I can always trim it. Unfortunately, Rhino is not a parametric modeler, so I'll be drawing stuff again but it's easy because I'm going to keep it in, like I'm just doing a 2D layout of it now, and then I'll extrude everything. But I can always go back to this and change it and just restretch it. This isn't complicated. So I'm just going to explode that. I'm going to just drag that up to wherever I want. <laughs> Ebow. there I think maybe one less yeah let's do it there you can always change you can always fix it later so it's one two three millimeters past the just drag this one by eye, one, two, three millimeters past. That idea. Hey, non-fam, how are you? Thanks for visiting. Wow. Got a whole bunch of the crew here today. Awesome. Thanks for stopping in to listen to me babble on <laughs> and fiddle with, with a 3D object. All right. So... Now this one here is the, the piece that has to go into the door. So the actual handle grip itself will be inside of that. So I'm gonna do the, take that again, 
and do another offset. I'm sure there's a icon somewhere for offset, but I use it enough to remember that. And I'm gonna go two millimeters inside of that. That should give me a two millimeter wall on the inside piece, which is plenty, I think, for this project. I don't think it's gonna have to take a lot of force or anything. It'll print okay. So how much will that leave? What's that space in there? This is gonna have some massive text, I'm sure. Ooh, 12 mil or so, half an inch, roughly. Didn't bring my calipers back from when I measured the quarter. Um, yeah, I guess I will be scaling all this again anyways. We can make it a one millimeter wall, right? Let's make that a bit bigger. Let's get rid of that. Let's take this. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize you were the, the same person, but thank you. <laughs> One of the fun things of uh, streaming multiple places is you get people with all their different names. I do the same thing. Multiple names everywhere, it seems. Because my Twitch account is more tied to my old Xbox stuff. But... All right, so that's probably the way I'm going to go with that. I'm just trying to think if I forgot anything. I've got the piece to make the flange. I've got the hole to go in the middle. The piece to extrude the back. i got the place to put the holes. Probably throw some countersunk type angled pieces on there just in case. I don't know what kind of screws he's going to use. I'm going to suggest that he uses countersunk heads. Thanks for giving me extra watch time. <laughs> is it working okay on uh, on Twitch? I just assume that YouTube is, because that's where I usually stream. But I thought for these, I just use the the powers of StreamYard, and I can with my level account in StreamYard, I can do three at once. So I created a Facebook page, and I don't think anybody's come in from Facebook yet, because I probably don't know the page is there. But, and that's where I have to go mark my participation to get my little gold star for the day for making a video. So, here's like fair lately put it there. But when I put the link in it, I put the YouTube link. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure that nobody's going to stumble upon me on, on Twitch, that's for sure. I can't even find stuff I want to find on there most of the time. anything just looking at the picture looks like uh, I guess we'll find out it'll be fun all right okay let's call it there let's do the important thing save it because you know, I don't want to have to go through all that work again <laughs> okay so here we are let's put this in render view let's do it a cooler one than that That's the one I want there. Yeah, it takes a second to render it. I'm sorry, it's just like an old pencil drawing, like an old charcoal drawing. That's one of the things I do like about this is that it's got different views, which is handy when you're trying to figure out what something's gonna look like sometimes.
Okay, everything's still rocking over there. Yeah, if I would have more time, I would have used this as a good project to learn a new piece of CAD software, but I just want to get this done so I can get a print ready for the guy to pick up in the next day or so. And then iterate and hopefully get it done, but all done before the weekend. So learning new software was not my plan. So how many of these are solid still? This one should be all separated. Join those, so there's a uh, solid continuous line. And, okay, let's start making this into something. Okay, so let's take that one. And overall, he said it was three quarters of an inch, so about 19 millimeters, so I'm gonna go 18. I also see that there's a, a bolt or something sticking through from the handle on the other side that may get in the way, so but we'll find out. So I'm gonna go solid, extrude straight, and we're gonna go down 10, it should be minus 18. And then, yeah, I'm gonna make it even shallower, isn't it? quite that deep. I'll try and get around that bolt problem. Because I can see it in the picture. Right there. There's a bolt that's probably holding the handle on on the other side. It's right there. So I'm going to make this thing shallower than, than he suggested it should be. So I'll just take that and I'm going to say make it about, it's not to be real deep, it's only about half an inch wide, so it doesn't have to be a lot deeper. If you took that into account. Let's do it about there. All right, and then we're going to take this, and this is going to extrude the other way. millimeters should be good for the faceplate thickness. It doesn't have to be too much. And then we're going to just shorten this down a bit with a one axis stretch. And that's those two in place. And then we're going to take the inner inner one and we're gonna extrude it a bunch and then we're gonna bring it in leave it a one millimeter back and I think that should work now Set one of these is hopefully I'll remember to um to take all of those parts and make a color gets my attention on screen. I always make another right before I start doing all the booleans to cut all the pieces up. I usually copy all the parts and put them there. Then when I have to come back to it, it's easier to work from where I was. Just trying to make sure I don't that I've everything kind of where I want it. Before I start doing what I'm going to do. Also, by making it a bit shallower, I'm going to save a bunch of support material because I will print this face up the way it's going to look. Because I don't want the inside to be all jaggy from the from the support material either. So, and I don't want to print this out of resin, at least not yet. Maybe at the end, hopefully it'll fit. 
Anyway, um, for this stage, it'll work. And I'll turn on ironing maybe on the top to get it look nice. Put some rounds in it, and away we'll go. Okay, let's grab the two holes, slide them down. So they'll actually intersect the model. I'm starting to think those are too big, but we'll see. Roll the bones, see what happens. All right. Anybody think I've missed anything before I start carving this little puppy up? It auto saves, but if I do that too often, it'll warn me, tell me I'm wasting my time or something. So I'm just going to uh, copy those in place, move them to that layer, hide that layer. And now I've got a copy that I can work with. And, oh, I forgot to put the, the chamfer on those. Rats. Just do a cone, solid cone. There. As big a base as I want. Doesn't really matter. About 45 is more than okay for this. Like so. Again, I'm probably going to move the changes around anyway, so. And we will just copy that in place. Slide it to the other end. Spare copy. this back to wireframe so that I can do this part because right now I'm going to fill it an edge and put a round a rounded piece around the bottom is fine. Something to make it not square. Now I subtract it, it'll leave that on the other side. I'm not worried about the back side, so we won't bother there. And then when we're done, we'll do it around the top and the do the same thing. Repeat it, or repeat it on this part. And go back to just, and then we can. Okay, now we can start booing, booleaning everything. So I'll take the bottom, no, that one, and we'll join them together with a 
Boolean join. And now those are one piece. When I pick it, it's just that one. And then we're going to subtract this plug in the middle with the rounded bottom edge. And now I can delete this because I already have a spare copy of it for, for next time. And should see where there's a round across the bottom. So that's good. Looks like a weird shaped bathtub. Again, Martinsville. At least NASCAR related things and Mosher isn't here. <laughs> if he's watching, he'd be jumping in on that. Fillet edge again. I don't have to look to type that anymore. I typed it so many times. And yeah, I know there's an icon for it somewhere, but lazy. Okay, so now it's smooth going in, smooth on the bottom for their fingers. And we're not going to care about the backs, so we'll print it that way. Now we can subtract the cones and get them out of our way because we made a copy of those as well. And yeah, I know there's an option to have it delete them as I use them, but that stung me too many times, so I don't leave that on. Take the main object, let's move it to its own layer. Let's make it that one. There one. Then we can turn off the other layer. This one is our main layer. Turn that one off. And that's kind of re incubate. Yeah, I didn't get to you today. Your stuff just doesn't work with exploit. When he was here. He doesn't use it in a while either. Um, what do we think? That should do the job. I'll print it this way and it should work. I could put a fillet in here, but I won't because it might not fit the hole properly if I'm, if I'm close, if I'm lucky. And it doesn't matter. It's not a stress or anything. I can be stress on this thing. <clears throat> so, let's do the other important thing. Save. Then export selected. Where we are this time. Screen door pull, please. And sure, call it that. Take the defaults. And that's that. So, anybody have any questions or comments? Now's your time. We're almost done here for tonight, a little over an hour, so that's not, or just under an hour. So that's good. Thanks, red light. Yeah, I think it should do for a test print. He'll bring it back and tell me where I did wrong. Hopefully he'll measure and say that this part should be a little bit wider, narrower, whatever. We'll see. It's an interesting experiment, too, to do it remotely. And I think the holes might be too big for the screws, but I can fix that. The main thing is he won't be using a ragged aluminum edge as a handle to open the door. <clears throat> I've been there, done that. Didn't have a 3D printer when I had to fix one of those. I used tape and a piece of plastic. It. 
That house is long in my past. You can make stuff like this. You have printers, right? This isn't, I mean, I'm using this software because I, it, I use it for work. Like I've been using this for, I don't know, 15, 20 years, probably. As long as I can remember, I've been using Rhino. So I'm just used to it. And, but I mean, I could have done this in Tinkercad and it's free and it's pretty easy to use. I would have to learn how to use Tinkercad more. I've used it a couple of times, but but you could do it. And because this is a simple shape, you just have to think it out. And hopefully I covered the bases to be close on the first test print and see what happens. But anyway, thanks everyone for, for stopping in. that and I'll say thanks for stopping in tonight and hanging out with me and if you learned a little bit of something that's awesome and if not that's okay too <laughs> no pressure um, and I just want you all to be safe and remember never let the machines win